Hi everyone, it's Christy from Green Eyed Tarot. It's Sunday, which means it's time for another episode of Spread It Out Sunday. Spread It Out Sunday is a series I've been doing on my channel. And the major premise of this series is I dig into my tarot library um, or the tarot vault, as I like to call it, and I find a deck. More importantly, I find their guidebook to the deck and I choose a spread from the guidebook and we pull some cards for the spread and interpret what we think it means. This really came about because I really wanted to connect with decks that have been sitting in my tarot library for many years in some instances, as well as I realized that sometimes I don't look at the guidebooks for every deck and there's some really great spreads in the guidebooks. And a lot of times they really sync up with like the theme or the energy of the deck. So that's how this came about. So we are here today and instead of a deck, Sometimes I dig into my tarot book library. And so that's what we're doing today. So instead of a um, spread from a guidebook, we're actually going to be looking at a spread from the Tarot Spreads yearbook. 52 Tarot Spreads for Getting to Know Yourself. So um, this is an amazing book that's full of so many different spreads. And you can see 52 spreads. So actually it's one for every week of the year. If you wanted to actually move through this book like that, you could. I have not done that. I just sort of dig into this book when I'm looking for um, a specific spread theme or something, questions I'm looking to have answered. I will dig into this book. So for today, seeing as we're um, entering that darker um darker part of the year I just did my decks for the descent video a few weeks ago which so many people have um have joined in on that tag so it's been great I'll try to make sure I link it below the playlist so as we're moving into this sort of darker part of the year I I kind of connect that with a lot of ancestor work so for today we're gonna be digging into so this is the book is just a little background about the book. It is, um, it's separated by these seasons. So we have the season of growth, the season of shadow, season of change, season of care. So these are supposed to match up with cyclical seasons of the year. Again, you can sort of use this book however you want, but that's how the book is set up. We're going to dive into the season of shadow. And we are going to do... This spread, um, which is in this, like I said, the season of shadow, and it's the family spread. So this relates quite a bit to uh, ancestor work and in particular generational trauma or a generational shadow, if you will. So I'll read a little bit from the book. It says, no one is shaped by their own experience alone. The experiences of your family, blood or found, can have profound effects on how you see and navigate the world. That means that some elements of you live in the shadows, not because you put them there, but because they were already there when you came into this world. So it says, unpack your history, find the root, explore the consequences, move forward. So that's what this spread is really helping us to do. So you can see it's a pretty hefty spread. There's eight cards, um, but oddly enough, there's only four prompts. So the first prompt, number one, is a generational shadow or trauma that I've inherited Two, four, and six, so the even cards, the consequences of this shadow slash trauma on my family. Three, five, and seven, the consequences of this shadow trauma on me. Eight, one small thing I can do to heal myself or my family or both. So that's the gist of this spread. Eight cards, it's in the season of shadow and it's family. So this is about ancestor and, and ancestors and generational shadow or trauma. So let's dig into um, this magnificent spread from this book. I'm going to leave this open very close by. Let's see where I can prop it up so that I can see. Let's leave it right there. So I'm going to be able to see this um, spread and keep referring to it because I'm going to have to. There's a lot of cards. So to go along with this, um, this spread, 
I'm going to be using two decks that I use for ancestor type work. So these are decks that are actually pretty familiar because I did a video on ancestor work and tarot. So these two were um, figured prominently in that video and are connected to that type of work. So I'm gonna use the Darkness of Light Tarot and I'm gonna use the Beloved Dead Oracle. I like using these two together again for this type of work. So we're gonna use these two decks. So I'm thinking I'll just kind of get a feel for when I wanna pull an Oracle card. Um, maybe we'll alternate, um, but we have eight cards for this spread. So let's see what we pull for this family spread. And this is from the Tarot Spreads yearbook. So eight cards. And our first card is the generational shadow or trauma that I've inherited. So let's see what we pull for the first card. And hopefully we'll be able to fit all these cards in the frame. I always do this and then never have space. So card number one, the generational shadow or trauma that I've inherited. Oh, I'm just trying to sort of get in the space, set the space for myself. I'm not going to go too deep with this, but we'll see what comes up. Ooh, the 10 of wands. Wow, that's powerful. Right off the bat, that's just a powerful card to get. And this imagery in the Darkness of Light Tarot is, um, it's pretty jarring. It's pretty visceral. This Ten of Wands, this, this burnout, this overwhelm, this overburdened feeling. Um, so it's so interesting. So a generational shadow or trauma or just a, a shadow, I'll, I'll refer to it to more as a shadow rather than a trauma, um, for myself. Um, but it could be that, you know, just that for generations, there's been this sort of almost like a shadow over my family, you know, or just things that have happened that, you know, we're very fortunate. And I'm very grateful for um, all of the opportunities I've been presented. So that's not, that's definitely not, but just digging into what it could be, I that being overburdened and feeling that, um, just being bogged down by and and burnt out by just everyday life and stressors um i feel like that's that could be a possibility you know that that that's something that's been carried forward through generations on both sides of my family um quite frankly and um just from what i know about how my uh, how my ancestors came to this country um they all came through ellis island uh and um and settled in new york so they didn't really leave this area um and um were very poor and and worked and worked very hard um from what i know about the research i've done um so it's you know it's 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 just interesting that we got the ten of wands that's that's really interesting okay so ten of wands the generational shadow so two four and six are even cards the consequences of this shadow slash trauma on my family. So we're just going to stick with the consequences of this shadow. So two, four, and six. So let's do a card from, let's do another tarot card and then maybe pull an oracle card to go along with this row of even cards. Ooh, the five of coins. <gasps> wow. Okay. Consequences of this burnout and stress and being overburdened and just, I can't, I, can't, I keep going back to sort of like that financial stress, that sort of that poverty, you know, that living in poverty um, type of energy and shadow that that's coming from the first card. The five of coins is, is so interesting. So the consequences of this, uh, yeah, I mean, just de that death, that feeling of, of, of destitution or, you know, that 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 burden right that that burden that financial burden so the coins the fact that the coins came up is is super interesting to me that we're in the pentacle suit here so let's see let's pull some a card from the beloved dead oracle for the four for the four position for the next even card
or actually let's go in order. Let's do that. Let's do number three. So this is the odd cards or the consequences of the shadow on me. So let's do, let's do number three instead. We'll do it like that. We'll do it in numerical order, even though we're splitting off with these odd and even cards. Let's do it in numerical order. Ooh, the five of blades. Interesting. Okay, let's see if we can get these cards in the frame. That's so interesting. So again, sort of this, as much as the five of blades is sort of about healthy competition, I feel like for me, this consequence of this shadow or trauma could definitely be related more to my own sense of uh, this competition I have with myself. That something that I that I struggle with is like, um, I feel like I, I can never get ahead. I spend a lot of time not not sitting back and actually appreciating like the things that I've done and, and where I've been and, um, and find, I get bogged down by, by financial things like so often, like financial concerns. And, um, I guess it's a pretty common thing to be concerned about. It's, I just feel like I don't want to, I don't want that to be the focus, right. Of my life. And like this, like this cycle that we get caught in of, um, of money sort of being the, the be all and end all of like everything. So I feel like I'm, I'm always in like competition or I feel like I put myself in competition with others, like what others have. And like, I feel like, okay, so I have to catch up. It's like that keeping up with the Joneses thing. So I feel like I'm always fighting that and with my, with, with myself and trying and fighting like just society as a whole. And like the messages we, we hear and that we, we, we get through the media and through just social media as a whole, so that's where I'm going with that. I feel like that's that's something that's making sense for me. Just thinking about myself, and and it you know it could definitely be around this this feeling of you know like you're and I feel like this trauma is sort of like that one emergency right away from being completely in a in a serious situation. If that makes sense, you know, I feel like so many of us live in this sort of like we're comfortable and we have what we need. And I'm so grateful and, and thankful that I have what I need. Um, and then there's this other side of it, like just of thinking about like, what would I do if there was a, you know, emergency? Like, what would I have? Where's the, the, um, the rainy day fund, right? When that rain comes. And so I feel like that's something that's carried forward. Like we don't, I don't know that anybody in my family in many generations had a nest egg, right? They had what they needed, which is, which is perfect. You know, us having what we need is, is a good thing. All right. So let's pull from the beloved dead and see what we get. So number, so this would be consequences for my, of the shadow on my family. Disconnect. Interesting. Okay. I'd love to see what the guidebook says because the beloved dead is an oracle deck and I can kind of have my own feelings about this, this disconnection from, disconnection even just from each other across generations. Um, this, I feel like there's been so much in my background that I've unearthed through doing like research about things that were hidden, right? It was so much easier back then to have secrets and to have things hidden um, and to keep things hidden for generations because we didn't have social media. We didn't have the internet, right? We didn't have the access. And I don't know that my relatives and my ancestors had any kind of concept that that could be possible. And now with the research tools and the amount of, of information we have at our fingertips, I've unearthed things that I feel were very, um, were meant to be hidden and kept buried um, that, that, probably had a lot to do with shame and guilt. So I think that there is a disconnect between generations where the truth wasn't told and it wasn't carried forward and it was a, it, like the secrets were carried forward and that's the shadow. And I think there's a disconnect between, between truth and, and what was told and what was passed down. So that's, that's where I see disconnect. Um, but it would be interesting just to dive into the guidebook a little bit. And without reading glasses, this is going to be fun. Between here and there lies an eternity, a space, and us against them polarization, a misunderstanding. 
At its best, disconnect refers to parties who aren't making the most of their time together. They aren't seeing things the same way, not on the same page, or have diametrically opposed views and leanings. At its worst, this card indicates a withdrawal of support or solidarity, an experience of ghosting that rouses feelings of abandonment, unworthiness, or insecurity. So again, there's a lot of things. Without going into detail, detail, there's a lot of things that I feel like speak to this feeling of or these feelings of abandonment and unworthiness um, and insecurity with possibly like life choices and those being judged for those. So I like in this, and you can see in this card, their backs are turned. So it's a literally turning of our backs on other family members because we don't agree with the choices they've made or or just um, the lifestyle that they're living uh, and how they're choosing to live their lives. And so I see that in that disconnect card 100%. So for me, so this would be a consequence of this shadow on me. Um, so this is number five. Okay, so this is an odd card. So this would be this, this consequence of this shadow on me communication and again look at oh my gosh look at this side by side they're fighting and they're this boxing this uh oh my gosh this this conflict uh I can't believe these two cards came up next to each other uh and it it's sort of amazing that they did so this conflict uh this continuation here of the message of how is this affecting me how is this shadow this intergenerational shadow affecting me and I just see this um this sense of conflict and we all know what happens when we don't communicate we all know what happens when the communication breaks down um so here we have communication So here you are minding your own business when someone says or does something and now you must answer or vice versa. Whether it's trivial, breaking news, a statement or question, you quickly process this data. You synthesize the choice of words, tone, and unspoken body language and facial expressions. Different people trigger different responses. Some people automatically bring out the best in you, inspiring reason, trust, confidence, and agreement. Others conjure the worst, provoking worthlessness, defiance, pigheadedness, suspicion, sycophancy combustion why is this so it says it wants to explore how you're relating to others according to eric byrne the father of the theory of transactional analysis there are three egos it's parent adult and child and you routinely shift between them this is so interesting that's why this deck is so amazing so it says the child ego state has at least two voices, one that's adaptive, compliant, obedient, disciplined, apologetic, pleasing, and needy, or one that's spontaneous, wild, creative, defiant, fiery, and in your face. This Pee Wee Herman ego state likes to whine, whinge, snort, giggle, throw tantrums. I don't care. No, you are. Get out of my face. Oh my gosh. I feel so attacked right now and so called out. Um, because for as much as I am self-aware and feel like I have um, a certain sense of emotional intelligence, I also have this side of me that is is exactly what is being described in this entry from this guidebook. Um, so I feel like that, again, that that I feel like I'm always battling or like having to prove myself. And so that's that battle and that's that communication. At, like I always have to defend sort of always on the defensive, like ready for a debate, ready for an answer. Um, I always talk about the listening to understand instead of listening to respond. And I struggle so bad with this. So the listening to respond is something I always find myself going to because I'm always formulating what my answer is going to be, what my debate, what my retort is going to be. I'm always doing that in my head. So I feel very called out right now, but it's, it may, it's making a lot of sense for me. Okay, so we're back to consequences of this shadow on my family. So this is the final card in this row. This is six. So this is card position number six. Let's see what we're going to get for this continued. The King of Blades. Interesting. This is really, really interesting. So the King of Blades for consequences of this shadow on my family. I feel like this sort of relates to, 
It's interesting because I feel like in my family, the women outlive the men. And I don't know why that's coming up for me right now. I just find um, just from what I know about when people have passed away in my family, going back like a few generations, it, it seems like the women are really, um, really tend to outlive. And I don't know if that's a just has to do with like genetics, you know what I mean? Like medical and health and things like that and genetics, but just looking at the 10 of wands is like this burden and it's a man in the 10 of wands in this deck burdens by this. And I'm just wondering how that has impacted um, generations because in so many instances, the men, in some instances, the men came here first and left their women and children behind or even just their wives behind or the women behind and like mothers and like had to come here to work to be able to bring them over themselves. And so I don't know if that has something to do with it. So this, this sort of the shadow I see could be that this sense of, this sense of responsibility, this sense of duty coming up in this King of Blades, almost like Emperor energy, but in this King of Blades, um, again, like sort of a mind overburdens. Um, because if you look at this card, he almost looks like he's, he looks like he could be in thought, but he also looks like he's contemplating lots of things. Like he has this sense of responsibility, um, a sense of duty, a duty, a sense of fairness, a sense of, you know, practicality or logic, like you being very logical and using that logical mind. And I don't know if that has been something that has carried forward, you know, and been something that would be like some sort of shadow for my family. So that's interesting. It's, it's definitely something to think about. This is just surface level, just hits I'm getting as these cards come up, just what's coming off the top of my head. Um, so that's interesting. Interesting to think about that, just about how the men have outlived typically in my family, which is, is like horrifying. Like when I think about it, just when I just think about it, but there's, we just have so many women left in my family, um, that their husbands or fathers or, you know, just have gone before, have gone before them. And so, okay. Um, so this is the consequence of my, sh the shadow on me. So let's, we're using, okay, we're using the tarot deck. I'm switching decks here and I'm confusing myself. We're using the darkness of light to get this number seven card to see what comes up in addition to what we have already. Ooh, the ace of cups. So interesting that I was just talking about emotional intelligence. Really interesting that this came up and that I said, I consider myself in some ways emotionally intelligent. I, I think that this connects to this communication like this is speaking to me as a shadow that's, that's, that's on me. As a consequence of this shadow on me, I see that I don't always have an easy time talking about my feelings. Could be because I'm like from generation X. That's like another conversation. I feel like as a Gen Xer, this comes up a lot about this emotional, like being able to communicate appropriately about my own feelings um, and put it in the perspective of this is my, this is what's happening for me. So my communication tends to get defensive instead of just e explaining what my feelings are. So I get on the defensive. So I see this boxing as like, that's, that's, that's coming up for me. So it's interesting that the Ace of Cups comes up as something that could be a consequence and that I'm not great about getting, like, getting in touch with, okay, this is the feeling I'm feeling and then communicating about it. Um, so being able to name my feelings appropriately and be like, that's the feeling. Um, and now what do I do, right? How do I move forward now with this? And how do I communicate about it? So it's definitely connected. I see those feelings being connected. So we have one more card. It's one small thing I can do to heal myself. So let's pull an Oracle card. Since we started with uh, the tarot, let's pull an Oracle to, to wrap this up for the eighth card. One small thing I can do to heal myself or my family and or my family. So this could be either or. We can think about it in terms of the self, the family as a whole, as me as part of my family. Let's see what comes up for one small thing I can do to heal myself or my family. Oh, Ouija. So have a seance? No, I'm kidding. But maybe, like maybe, maybe that's it. We need to connect with, need to connect with, right? And, and heal it. 
You have to connect with them. You got to connect with that energy. So let's see what the guidebook says about Ouija. All right. Oh, this is so interesting. So it's not a, that's right. So this card is an actually bright blessings for Samhain is what is included. Um, it says, by the light of the blood red moon, come gather in the corn. Tonight the wind will sing her fields, a song of souls forlorn. Glory be the Trinity when planets are in trine. Turn over a glass on a lettered board with numbers not to nine. First, close thine eyes and visualize. Be bathed in sapphire light. Invoke the harvest, rich and dark, for graveyards yield tonight. And spirits summoned, one by one, spell out their stories dear of deaths incurred by violent means of anger, dread, and fear. Let thy fingers lightly rest for questions they'll pursue. But be careful who you ask to rise, for know they envy you. And know that those with hollowed eyes years desperately to see and know that those with blackened souls the blood red moon sets free Ooh, i just gotta chill up my spine so we pulled the ouija card and that's the entry for the ouija card is is a a Samhain sort of invocation about connecting with ancestors so i feel like the one small thing i can do is to is to con continue trying to connect and also keep in mind to be really intentional, intentional about why and, and, and how and, and who, right? I'm asking to come forward and having respect for that connection. So that's so interesting that that came up. I feel like the message is that I need to continue this. I need to continue this work. Um, so I think this was amazing. I think this spread is amazing. I am so glad I did this today. So this is Spread It Out Sunday, Ancestor Edition. Perfect time of year for this. Tell me your thoughts on this spread. I think that this is an amazing spread. Like I said, I think the cards I got were so um, illuminating and insightful. And I love how they're speaking to each other. And I'm still looking at the backs turned in this disconnect card. And like my focus is going there. I think this is amazing. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed doing this. Please let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have this um, Tarot Spreads Yearbook. This is by Chelsea Pippin Mizzy. It's illustrated by Kara Hudson. It's beautifully illustrated. Um, if that's something that, you know, you um, tend to get drawn to illustrations in a book. Um, it is really beautifully illustrated. It's color coded by season, which is lovely. But let me know if you have this book. It's, um, it's, it, I really do enjoy it and I, I love diving into it. I think this was an amazing spread for this, um, for this time of year. Like I said, let me know your thoughts on the reading. You have any insights for me on what you think this means? Um, does it resonate with you in any way and your own family and possible generational shadows? Please consider um, subscribing if you're not subscribed already. Um, this series has, I believe this is episode 14, which is amazing. I'm enjoying this so much and I hope that you are too. I hope this resonates with you in some way. Um, and please consider sharing this with people you know. If um, you enjoy just sitting down with cards and talking about what they could mean and looking at really cool tarot spreads, then please share this with your friends and community so that we can connect together over the cards. And I will see you all in the next video.